Hello, I'm Steve Burgess, and this is my colleague and team member, Monique Glover, and welcome to Adventures in Regression Therapy. We thought that today we talk about treating depression with regression, because depression is so well treated by regression therapy. Our take on uh, depression is that it's usually an emotional cause. It's caused by locked in emotions. And the emotion which is at the heart of depression is actually locked in anger. This is anger that is not being released or worked through by the sufferer, which then goes back inside and causes the depression. And what we find as regression therapists is that anger is a composite emotion. And what that means is that underneath the anger, there's always another emotion and it nearly always is sadness. So this is why depression is caused, uh, it, sorry, this is why depression um, has this sort of melancholic aspect to it. Underneath the anger is this deep sadness. I do actually sometimes find, I don't, about, don't know about you, Monique, but I sometimes find that there's also guilt in there as well, mm -hmm. uh, underneath the anger. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you a sort of an example of how we treat depression, and for us, depression, by the way, is perfectly curable. Uh, I was looking at an American psychological website recently, mm -hmm. uh, and it stated explicitly that depression is not curable. And I nearly fell over. Because I've, we both have, we, as regression therapists, we have people who are cured of depression regularly when they're able to work on the emotional roots of it. Um, and to give you just one example, uh, and I wrote extensively about this client in my book, The Power of Past Life Regression. Uh, this lady who came to me with severe depression, she was actually a therapist herself. And the depression had been with her for a long time and she couldn't shake it off. She tried medication. She tried all sorts of things. And her subconscious, when I guided her into trance in our first session, indicated that there were five past lives causing the depression. And um, in the first past life, she saw herself as a young woman, um, a young mother, and her child died. And she couldn't come to terms with the death of the child. And as a result of that, she killed herself. And so that residue of all that emotional pain was still in her subconscious in this present lifetime. Mm -hmm. She went into another past life um, where she was a, uh, a very poor flower seller in Victorian London in the 1800s. She was... Uh, in living in poverty, sitting on the street every day with a basket full of flowers, desperately hoping people would buy flowers for a few pennies. Um, and she got more and more sick because she wasn't eating well, because she was living in poverty. One day uh, she was so ill, she went to uh, what she thought was a doctor's house, but in fact he was a quack doctor for help. And he took her in and he raped her and then murdered her. So, of course, there's a lot of anger and emotion in that experience. Mm. In another past life, she was actually um, hung as a witch. And uh, we see often people in past lives who have had past lives as witches. Um, and this was, of course, she, it was totally wrong. It always was wrong, but she wasn't had nothing to do with witchcraft. Um, somebody had a vengeance against her, so she was hung in front of her children who were watching in the crowd. Uh, in the fourth past life, she was a young man in possibly Roman times who was guarding his village and didn't do a good job of it, so that when the village was attacked, he didn't sound the alarm. Um, and his uh, wife and children were killed, and then he was killed as well by being dragged along behind a chariot for some time until there was very little left of him in the ground. Um, and the last past life, again, she was a male soldier who was a coward in a battle, and she he ran away from the battle or on his horse, uh, was terrified of dying. The horse actually threw him, and he died as a result of that, but he had a lot of guilt as he was dying, he, took, he brought this guilt with him as well about leaving his comrades behind. 
Um, so we cleared all those fast, all those five past lives in a few sessions. Obviously, there's quite a lot of tears coming through and a lot of emotions. And the depression was completely healed. It was completely cured. And I, I've seen her over the years uh, after the session, years after the session, and she's just still very, very well in herself with no, no reoccurrence of the depression. So... That's just a sort of an example, one of the stories that I often tell about depression, um, because it is treatable. Mm -hmm. and, and our sort of take, we, we you know, for us, the, the, uh, the chemical imbalance in the brain uh, it, it being a cause of depression for us is quite a myth. And I know you, Monique, particularly have looked at this quite extensively, haven't you? Yeah, 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 especially when um, the... Um the medications that are, I guess, offered as the, the resolution mm -hmm. um, to the condition are offered kind of how, how that all comes into play as well as the, um, the physical dependence that forms being on them and the difficulty people are having coming off of these medications, um, which hypnotherapy can help with regression therapy in particular, because what happens is these medications, they, they repress all of this emotional trauma that has been going on. So the answer is instead of feeling the emotions and releasing them to use this medication as a lid to push it back down. Um, and many people have been on these for, you know, years, decades, right? Yeah. Right? Since they were teenagers and now they're in their 60s. Um, so you think about all of those emotions that have been pushed down around these traumas it's almost like this backlog you you start slowly coming off of these medications and not only are there horrifying side effects that are happening at the same time in the physical body but all of the emotional trauma is coming up so it's very dual and intense in that way and how the body and the brain are reacting and also all the emotional trauma is coming up at the same time. It's kind of this double whammy of everything coming out. Um, but where regression therapy comes in is now we can help them to address what is coming out now. And it's often very intense because it's not, you, you haven't been processing it. You've shoved it in a dark corner for decades and now it's all coming out. So it's a very intense process, um, but it's a very effective way to help throughout this um, withdrawal period, which can last um, years. I mean, we're, we're not talking about days or weeks. This is years for, for many people. Yes, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, there's no real science being done in terms of how slowly people should take her off if they decide to come off. I and mean, we're not saying for one minute people should stop taking antidepressants. That's the that's a job for the doctors to decide. But uh, people who do start to taper off, you know, doctors often don't know how slowly, and, and it, it could be that people should be tapering for years. Yeah. Um, many many months incredibly slowly to at least have a chance to reduce the side effects that they can feel when they start to come off the things mm -hmm. and a lot of people are turning to each other because that knowledge is not there um, or there's many accounts of people and this is through lots of books that are coming out now things in mainstream media documentaries about um, patients being gaslit by their providers for experiencing these symptoms or being told it's them experiencing the, the original depression, the original anxiety, even though the symptoms they're experiencing, they've never had them before. They never had them when they experienced that original root cause. You know, you have someone that went on antidepressants for anxiety and now they have suicidal ideation and they have tremors in their body. Um, so people are turning to each other for peer support on how to taper slowly and different things like hypnotherapy that can help as they're coming off and rediscovering themselves. For a lot of people, this is a rediscovering of themselves after being numb to emotions for a very long time. Good point. Uh, and you mentioned anxiety there. And of course, depression and anxiety so often go together. Yeah. And and yeah. there's, I always say, there's an epidemic of anxiety in the world generally. Um, and for me, again, as we know, that's an anxi anxiety is caused by anxiety. It's an emotional state. 
So in regression, we work on the anxiety. We yeah. don't mask it and release the anxiety and then it goes. So the whole concept is very simple. Yeah. Um, and, and just, you know, another uh, depression uh, case study I can give is a client who came um, with postnatal or postpartum depression. Mm. Uh, and she was a lady who came to me very worried because she was uh, pregnant for the second time mm -hmm. and her first pregnancy had been very painful because she'd had a lot of gynecology, gynecological work done mm. uh, before the first pregnancy uh, and there was a lot of uh, adhesions in there and she had a very painful first pregnancy. She was worried it was going to happen for the second time. So we did some sort of general hypnotherapy pain management stuff um, and the birth, the second birth was easier than the first one. She said the pain went about three days after we did the hypnotherapy session. Um, and she gave birth very, very easily. Unfortunately, she then uh, developed this postnatal depression where she was very angry, couldn't sleep. And of course, that made the anger worse. Um, and she actually had no tolerance towards the baby. And she was really quite worried about that, of course, as, as any mother would be. And her subconscious indicated there were four past lives which were causing this depression. Um, now, of course, as you and I know, sometimes the subconscious goes from A to B, you know. So sometimes you would see that B is the problem, A is the cause, and we can see a direct connection. In this case, there was no real direct connection. It was just general trauma that in some way had got connected to B, to the uh, having the baby. Uh, in the first past life, she, it was a death experience. So as we do a lot of death work in our sessions, releasing death trauma, where she was crushed to death. Second past life, she was a poor young girl who stole some bread in a marketplace because she was stealing. She got caught, so they chopped her hands off. Um, and that was the trauma there. Um, third past life, she was a Native American male, very old man who was traveling with his tribe, but was so sick and had some, so many problems that he just sort of fell off his horse and the, tr the tribe couldn't take him with him. So they just left him. So he died alone uh, with a lot of sadness that the tribe were leaving. And the fourth past life was very dramatic. She was actually a young woman, again, in, in poor uh, health, in, in, in poverty. Uh, she came to the age of about 14. So her mother, who was desperate for money and trying to, you know, father had disappeared or got drunk and never came home. Um, the mother actually sold her to a whorehouse. And so she became a prostitute. Um, but she tried to escape. And uh, whenever she tried to escape, the, the, there was a male there who, was, who would beat hell out of her uh, for trying to escape to teach her a lesson. Um, and eventually, after a, quite some time in this whole house, she did take the opportunity to, to escape. She thought she'd got away, but they found her. And this man then took her back in and in the most unpleasant way, tortured her and murdered her um, to teach her a lesson, you could say. So again, very unpleasant past lives. And that released all the trauma she was carrying and the postnatal depression just dissolved away absolutely dissolved away and she was then able to have a really loving relationship with the baby so you know we all the time in regression cause and effect the effect is the problem what's the cause locked in feelings and emotions from past traumas and so often in past lifetimes mm, i so often describe it as the well this is these are the symptoms your body is giving you these signals that there's something underneath we just look at the very kind of topical level and the body's working so hard to tell you kind of send off these alarm and it's not working against you it's trying to help you realize that there's these things in the root that need to be addressed and like you said when you address them then it dissolves away it's like plucking the root out it goes away exactly yeah. Yeah. and of course sometimes um with depression if you don't sort of treat it and you just mask it it mm -hmm. will sometimes come out in a different way in the body. Mm -hmm. So you may get skin problems instead. Um, so you think, oh, well, the depression is not so bad. But actually, I've, I've been getting skin problems for some time. Mm -hmm. or psoriasis or things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to treat the causes of the actual problem. 
Mm. And that's exactly what we're doing in regression therapy. Mm. Okay. okay, well, thanks for uh, watching and listening, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed our short discussion. Keep tuning in for more. Uh, it's from Monique Glover and myself, Steve Burgess. Bye for now. Bye.